Hi, I'm Stephanie Hutchins, author of Transformation After Trauma, Embracing Post-Traumatic Growth. And I'm coming on today to discuss a question I recently received on the topic of how do I overcome the feeling of being disgusting or dirty after um, experiencing sexual abuse? And, you know, this question hits very close to home. Um, because of my own personal trauma history. And so in case you're, you're not familiar, um, I wanna share the overview of my, um, of my experiences. Um, I've been sexually violated by eight men and uh, those violations occurred between the ages of nine and 19. And that doesn't even account for the time that I was attacked from behind at knife point because I was successfully able to get the knife away from my perpetrator. And then um, at 25, um, right before I was ready to move into um, a new home with a man that loved me in ways that I never imagined. And he was the first man who made me feel that I was deserving of love and respect. Um, I found him dead a week and a half before I closed on the house. And so, so I, I've had, you know, a very tumultuous relationship um, with men and a lot of um, really painful experiences. And, and one other thing I'll share is um, one of my victimizers at 12 years old would grab the fat on my stomach and say, you are so disgusting. I, you, you know, and he would just get this look and he'd say, you should be so thankful that I'm even touching you because you're so disgusting. And so all of these experiences made me feel that I was truly disgusting. And so at, in my early teens, I developed um, a very severe eating disorder. Um, initially, it started out with me over-exercising. And so I would walk for miles every day. I would walk eight to 10 miles a day, ride, ride, ride my bike for, you know, 12 to 14 miles. And then, you know, I also engaged in sports and then I'd stay up, you know, until the middle of the night exercising to work out videos to just burn off all of the yuck, you know? And then in my, you know, mid to later teens, it uh, transitioned into bulimia in the form of purging. So I would um, vomit um, up everything I ate eight to 12 times a day. And this went on for a very long period of time. And, and why I'm sharing all this with you is because all of these things are tied in with me having a deep sense of self-loathing, you know, self-hatred, hatred, and just, I felt so dirty and so disgusting for so many years. So when I was asked this question, it it, it brought me back, you know, to all of those years that, you know, that I was just working on trying to rid myself of those feelings of disgust. And so, um, you know, when asked, how do you overcome this? Um, I'm going to share how I worked through it. But what I also need to share is, I don't ever believe you overcome it in the sense that it'll never plague you. Because here I am, so I'm 39 years old today, or right now, and my last um, sexual assault occurred 20 years ago when I was 19 years old. And still today, 20 years later, I have to consistently resist these feelings of disgust coming in and invading my present life. You know, so it's, it's a constant... Um, I guess, fight to constantly fight to prove to ourselves that we are worthy of love, that we aren't disgusting, that we deserve respect. And so it's, it's a constant practice. And so, um, so where do I want to begin? So I guess the, the point where, even though in my teenage years, um, 
you know, I, I exhibited my self-loathing and disgust through an eating disorder and also through promiscuity. I became extre extremely promiscuous um, and, and it was all to um, prove that I was worthy. You know, if a man, I had it in my head that if a man would have sex with me, then that meant I was worthy of being touched, that my body wasn't disgusting. Okay. And the promiscuity continued um, into my 20s and it spiraled out of control after my significant other um, passed away. Um, it became really severe at that point. And, um, and what happened is after he died, his name was Stan, after he died, um, my my self loathing um, just it was it was just reached its its most critical point, and to the point where I wasn't bathing for days. Um, I would go four or five days without bathing or brushing my teeth or hair uh, without leaving my house. Um, you know, so and my home just became very dirty. Um, my my external life started to portray what I was feeling internally, you know? So my external life started to mirror that internal disgust that I felt. And so to work through that, what I had to do was start proving to myself that I was worthy, worthy of self-care and self-compassion and self-love. You know, people often have this misunderstanding, and I did for a long time, that you have to wait to practice self-care and self-love until you feel worthy, but that's actually not the case. You must practice self-care and which is ultimately forms of self-love. You practice it so you begin to feel worthy, okay? And that's what I found true in my own life, okay? So once I made the decision that um, I didn't want to keep living the way that I was, you know, just um, I was suicidal every single day. I, I didn't want to exist anymore. And once I made the decision to change, what I had to do first was prove to myself that I was worthy of still existing and moving forward. And I was worthy of being taken care of. So the first things that I had to work on was these, this deep sense of feeling dirty and disgusting. And so what I had to do is I had to force myself to take care of myself. And I literally every day would write down in my journal or on a piece of paper, my goals for the day. And to start, my initial goals were to brush my teeth. It was to shower. It was to take out the trash. It was these basic steps. Okay. Because, and they were some of the hardest because I didn't feel deserving. Okay. And what happened is as I began to practice basic forms of self care, I didn't need to keep writing it down. It became a habit. And something interesting started to happen is as I was able to practice these basic forms of self care, I was able to function more in my daily life. So there was a period of time after Stan died that I wasn't able to work consistently because the depression was so severe. And I was, again, I was just contemplating suicide on a, on a daily basis. And, um, and so in order to work, I had to be able to get dressed and function. And so what happened is as I began to practice these daily, these regular self-care practices, I began to feel ready to work. And, and so it all led, these self-care practices led me into feeling that I was worthy enough to work. And then what happened is as I began work, working and getting commended for um, my efforts in my career, um, I wanted to excel even further. And, and it just, it, you know, as I began to feel worthy in one aspect of my life, it began to trickle into other aspects of my life. Okay. 
Now, that doesn't mean that, again, this feeling of disgust and being dirty disappeared. It didn't, okay? It's still here today and still creeps in. But what I was doing is by practicing these basic forms of self-care and improving on different aspects, I was proving to myself over and over and over again that I was worthy of love. I was worthy of success in different aspects of my life. Okay. And, you know, so if you are at this place, okay, where you feel dirty and disgusting and you don't know how to proceed, I encourage you to meet yourself where you're currently at. Okay. If you are barely functioning in your daily life, again, meet yourself where you're at. Start with basic self-care practices, okay? The brushing of the teeth, the hair, cleaning of the body, your home, and it's going to be hard, okay? You're not wanna gonna wanna, you're not gonna wanna do it because you don't feel deserving, okay? So you have to know you're going to have that resistance. And what you have to do is literally force yourself to do it even though you don't feel like it and you don't feel deserving. Okay, you need to prove to yourself that you are deserving. And so you push through it because what you are doing is you are fighting against what your perpetrators did to you. Okay, and whether it happened once or multiple times, that memory is part of us and we're never going to be able to rid ourselves of that memory. So we have to constantly fight against what our perpetrators did to us. And unfortunately, nobody else can do that work for us. We have to do it ourselves. And I, I understand that you might want to feel resentful over having to do this hard work in the first place. But I encourage you to look at it as the event is over. And you have no control over your past. The only thing you have control over is how you proceed forward. Okay. And so I encourage you to find a sense of empowerment in what you do have control over today in this moment. Okay. Now, let's say you're at a, you know, a baseline level of good health, you're functioning in your daily life, but you can see how these feelings of disgust invade your current life, even though the out to the outside world, it appears that you're doing well. Um, there's other things that you can do to help fight off these um, feelings of disgust. And one of my favorite things to do myself is to um, practice like um, self-massage uh, with lotion. And because I, I am very prone to picking my body apart, um, I literally will take time, so I'll take lotion and I'll literally take time to carefully massage lotion into every part of my body. And I'll start with either my fingers or toes. And I take time to massage and like really put the lotion and really look at my body and focus and like focus on what it feels like for my body to be touched in a positive way. And, and to really take time to get to know my body and appreciate my body. And, and, I, and I, I, I really, I'll move from, you know, I'll start with my fingers and I move up my arm and to my shoulder and I'll do my toes all the way up my thighs and hips and buttocks and, and you know, I just do everywhere. And depending on how recent your um, sexual um, violations have been, touching certain parts of your body may be extremely uncomfortable for you. So if, if you're uncomfortable having your, your breasts touched or your buttocks or your hips, or, or maybe you have visible scars from your attack, um, it may feel uncomfortable touching them. Meet yourself where you're currently at. If you can't touch those places now, work up to it. I encourage you over time to get closer and closer to it. So if you're if it's your breast or your buttocks, you know, region that you have trouble touching, get closer to them over time. So maybe you start with your feet, you move to your calves, maybe you start with you know the bottom of your thigh, and maybe you progress closer. And and what 
and go as far as you can. But I encourage you to, if you start feeling heart palpitations coming up and, dis and discomfort, I encourage you to sit with them at a moment, okay? You maybe even stop doing the massage, sit back, take some deep breaths, and maybe even literally remind yourself, I am worthy, okay? I am deserving of love. I am okay. Even remind yourself, I am safe. Right now, I am safe. And remind yourself that the touch that you're experiencing is currently within your control completely. So if you feel you need to stop, you stop because that will reinforce to yourself that you're in control, okay? But the next time you come to this practice, maybe you can progress a little further. Okay. And, um, and I encourage you over time to have this be part of your regular, regular ritual. Like I'm particularly, um, uh, I guess, um, harsh, um, around my abdominal region and my upper thighs. See, after Stan died, um, I became morbidly obese. I, I put on an extremely amount of, a large amount of weight in a short period of time. And, and now I've lost that weight. And so I have a lot of excess skin and cellulite and it's, it's, my skin's all wrinkly. Um, and it's, it, it's not very, in many ways, attractive, you know, and I'm very, um, even today, have to be very mindful to not criticize that. And so I take time to massage the lotion into that excess skin. And I, I literally say, thank you, body. Like I, I thank my body throughout the day. Like if I feel like I'm being disgusting, I literally take my arms and I put them around my abdomen and I say, thank you, body. And it's worked for me. You can say something else, but I literally find myself and something else I do. I, I really like to place my heart, uh, my hand on my heart and feel it beating. And I'll sometimes put uh, the other hand around my stomach and, and say, thank you, body. And, and part of why I like to put my hand on my heart is because I can feel it beating. And after so many years of contemplating suicide, you know, and there's many ways I shouldn't still be here today. And so by feeling my heart beating, I feel gratitude for still being alive. And so I thank my body for still being here. And, and it helps me, okay? And so what I encourage you to do is find ways that you can practice gratitude for your body, okay? And any time, and find a way that you can come back to practicing gratitude for your body any time that you start practicing any form of self-disgust, okay? That it actually expresses itself, sometimes in words, sometimes in thoughts. Okay, finding a way to stop it and saying, no, 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 no. My perpetrator may have did this to me, may have engraved this thought pattern, but I can change it. Okay, and you have that within yourself to change that, that narrative. Okay, even though that narrative has been there for a very long time of I'm disgusting, I don't feel deserving of self-love, you can change that narrative, but it takes constant rewriting, okay, of that story that you have of yourself, that you're unworthy and that you're disgusting, okay? Um, trying to think what else I'd like to share with you today. Um, yeah, I, I have to tell you that this feeling of disgust, it's, it's still there. And I just need to remind you that you are worthy and, and it's within your control um, to begin to make yourself feel worthy. And yeah, if you, I encourage you to share um, 
you know, either in the comments or um, to me, directly message me and, and share with me um, any practices that you found particularly helpful. And, and I'd love to start accumulating um, other ideas so I can share it with my followers. And, and I love to find out new ways to move through our pain. And, and many times we have to find what's helpful to us in the, where we're at today, you know, a practice that you may have done in the early stages of your healing may have served you really well then, but as you move into different stages of your healing, maybe you'll have to adopt new practices. And so I encourage you to, to come up with new ways. And that's why um, my, my book, Transformation After Trauma, um, it's filled with the self-care practices that I used um, throughout my healing journey. And if you haven't, you know, when you, when you do read it, if you, if you take the time to do so or to listen to it, you'll see that I, I talk about the different forms of self-care that I used at different stages of my healing. And it's changed over time. And so I encourage you to arm yourself with different tools, you know, in your toolbox to combat these deep sense, this deep sense of self-loathing and just keep working the hardest you can to fight against it um, because you're, you're worth it. And, and, and I know you might not believe that, but that's why, again, you have to prove it to yourself over and over. And, and maybe it requires you saying it out loud, like physically putting your hands on your body and saying, I'm worthy. I am loved and I'm worthy of that love. Even if that love is only coming from you. And I think that's the most powerful person for it to come from is yourself. Because after our traumas occurred, unfortunately, we, we re-traumatize ourselves over and over by the stories we say to ourselves. And so we need to start changing that story. And, and again, it takes constant practice. So um, I encourage you to reach out with any questions or again, any feedback um, on practices that you found particularly helpful. And I wish you well on your healing journey. Thanks for listening.